Hello, it's Mr. Ops here, and today we're going to talk about what is called slope fields. Okay, and so when you see a picture like this, this is what is called a slope field or a direction field. And so what this is a representation of is at this particular point here, at 1, 2, the slope of the tangent is this. This value here is a graphical representation of the slope of the derivative at that point, the rate of change. And so I know the curve, oh, if there's going to be a curve here, I know it's just going to like touch there. It would not go through it because that's not how tangents work. And so this here is some kind of visual representation. So every single point here, the derivative was calculated and shown as little lines of some sort. And that's what a direction field is. It's all the slopes of the tangents of every single point on the grid. Okay, so let's actually do uh, an example here. So if I'm given a differential equation, such as dy over dx equals x minus y squared plus 2, we know it's a differential equation because there's a derivative in it, and, the, so, and we want to know if it's separable or not. And so this is not just a pure integration problem because I have both x and y over here. I want to know if it's a separable differential equation. If it's separable, that means I can have y dy of some kind of y equal to some kind of thing dx, where it is multiplication between this function y and dy, and it's multiplication between this function at x and dx. And so if I consider this, the only way to get this over to that side is through addition. So it's going to be y squared plus dy equals to x plus 2. Now, I know this is dx. If I multiply both sides by dx, well, this is easily dx. But if I multiply this side by dx, well, it's y squared dx plus dy. And this here, I can't do any integration on this craziness. And so it is not a separable because I'm not multiplying the y function times the dy. So it is not separable. And so if it's not separable, at this point in time, and for this course, we have no way to actually analytically calculate the solutions to this equation. And so we have to fall upon graphical approximations. And there are some analytic approximations as well to be able to solve this scenario. That's what slope fields help us with. They help us find the graphical solutions to this equation. All right, so, okay, so given this particular differential equation, we know it's not separable, and so can't actually analytically find the value with our skills. We're going to have to complete what's called a slope field. And to do so, we're going to use this table here. So here are my x values. Here I want my y values, and I'm going to use these, these values. So this here is negative 2, negative 2. And I plug it into my derivative, and that will give me the, the derivative at that point. So the gradient, the slope of the gradient of that point. So I go negative 2, subtract negative 2 squared, plus 2, ends up giving me a negative 4. So this is negative 4. I go to the next point where x is negative 1 and y is negative 2, going to this particular cell here, substitute it into dy dx, and I can see that my x is negative 1 minus negative 2 squared plus 2 gives me, well, that's going to be 1 minus 4, which is equal to negative 3. And this will end up being negative 3. And I go through each point individually, and you'll start to see some of the patterns that emerge. Um, and when you go and do that for all of them, you end up with this particular table here. Okay, and so let me clear off some of this. So I see what the table is. This is what I'm going to get. And so I get certain patterns, and oftentimes patterns come out, so it makes life a little bit easier to work to work through. Um, but you can go through and find all these, and there is our table to help find the slope uh, slope field at the points. Okay, so now that we have our table created, we take these values and we transfer them over 
to the graph. Remembering this is the x value and this is the y value in this case, the way I've set it up. And so I know for the x value of negative 2, the y value is negative 2, I have a slope of negative 4. And you just estimate the negative 4. And then for the x value of negative 1, the y value of negative 2, I get a slope of negative 3, which is a little less steep. Similarly, I get negative 2 for the next one, which is a little less steep again. And then negative 1 is exactly cutting the angle in half. And so, and then uh, here I get 0. And so I go through and I create this particular graph. So at negative 2 and negative 1 will make this be a negative 1. And you just do the best you can. And it's approximation, so that's okay. And this is 0. And then this is 1 and 2 and 3, a little bit more than 2. And I keep on going, I know I get x is negative 2, y is 0, I get 0, and I get 1. So now they're all done for us. This here is our slope field. We take all these values, transfer them over to here, and this is what the slope field looks like. All right? Um, and with technology, it's much easier to do. So here you can see uh, a slope field here, and I can make that here you can see how mine is very similar here's from 2 to negative 2 and there's the 0 and so this slope field here is the same as what I've created and technology is much easier to do it with um, but the act of bringing it over you need to know how to do and then finally the whole purpose of this was to uh, given this differential equation we want to find solutions to this differential equation at various points Okay, and so how do we actually sketch these out? For the, if this was my initial condition, what would the graph look like? Well, I'm going to start at negative 2, 2. And so here's the point, I'm going to call this A, okay? And so the way I do is I follow along, I know as it goes through, that's the, that is going to be the slope of the tangent line here, so I know it's doing that. As I follow it, it's going to come here, well that is going to be a slope of 0, it doesn't actually have to touch there, but then it's going to come back up again because I have to follow these slopes here. And it's also going to, because it's negative, it's going to come back down here. Something like this is how it's going to end up being. And so it's probably going to end up being a little bit smoother kind of thing. And as I come through here, I know I can't cut through these graphs, but this was a zero, so it's also probably going to do something like this idea here. And in all reality, this is close enough to get quite good estimates of what the actual solutions would be. So looking at B part, I'm gonna look, that's the point here, so I'm going to go 2, 1. And so when I look at there, I know it's going to go along here because this is going to push it this way. And I'm going to go down here, and it has to go between these two because this was portion this way, this was this way, so somewhere it's going to go along here, and then it's going to have to be pushed up. Somehow it's going to be pushed up. I know the slope was basically zero at this point, so it's going to be a little bit less somewhere in between, and it's going to be pushed up between these values here. So some kind of a curve like this is going to be sufficient for B. And then finally C part, if I start at, I go across zero at negative two, well, this here again is going to go up but as soon as it goes here, it's going to have to follow the same path as the green line here. But it's going to be going down this way, probably. And so here are three very different curves, the red, the green, and the purple, starting from the different points. But these are the solution curves to each of these. And, they're, and it's important to recognize that they're estimates, <clears throat> and the slope fields help us get a sense of where it's going. Um, Here's an actual slope field here with the point A, that's negative 2, 2, it goes up here. Here was the second one, it kind of came down as we've done and came out this way. And then finally C part, if we see that it comes down and then it goes on down, 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 down. Okay, so slope fields are quite handy in giving us a reasonable graphical output of what the solution curve would be for particular solutions that exist. If we want the initial value of 2, 1, then we can use that to find our specific curve.